Yeah, so today I want to talk about it is a great thing to serve the Lord. In the beginning, you realize that God called individuals to serve him. God called nations to serve him. God called leaders to serve him. Israel were called my servants. That's what God said about Israel. So it was a nation, a whole nation called to serve the Lord. Kings like David, he addresses David by saying, my servant David. A king was a servant of the Lord. You know, a servant is one who lays down his life to do the will of another. That is a servant. One who chooses to do the will of another. That is a servant. Now what I'm talking about today is more of us in the local church. Why we should serve God in the local church. Praise the Lord. Uh, in Romans chapter 1 verse 9, this is Paul speaking. And Paul says that for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul is stating that he serves God. He knew it. It was, it was, some, it was not, uh, by the way, it was not like many people tell you, yeah, we all have ways we serve God. How? Um, no, 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 no. Paul was not talking that way. If you went and asked him, do you serve the Lord? Yes, I serve the Lord. I serve him like this and this in the gospel. As a child of God, it's important for you to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Not just to be born again, but to serve the Lord. You are part of the family of God. The family of God is the church. And if we are part of the family, the church is not for consumerism. Church is not for? Yes. The question is not, what has that church done for me? The question should be, what have I done for that church and in that church? That should be the question. What have I done for that church and in that church? Because we are the church. So I thought the church was meant to help to pay my rent. You are the church. Pay the rent. Help. Who, how many have you helped to pay the rent? You are the church. You know, where does money in the church come from to pay rent? From the people. The church. So be one of them. Yeah, you can't be mad. The ones giving are not mad. The ones, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, Paul says that in Colossians 3.23 and Ephesians 6.7, they're talking about how whatever we do, let us do it heartily as unto God, unto the Lord, and not unto men. If we are just doing it as unto men, we are going to get tired. Going, sometimes men will not say thank you. Sometimes men will not say, you know, I'm here as a pastor. There are many things I don't know that go on in the background. Sometimes it's easier to appreciate people that you see. Is it easier to appreciate the worship team maybe because they're in front here? It's easier to appreciate there are guys who are behind their the computers have hidden their heads. Lights went off. I don't know what they were doing, but maybe they were busy on pressure. I don't know. And the service is going to end. I'm not going to go. I'm like, I know guys, you must have had a tough time. Thank you. No. I'm just going to go home. Then when I watch the video and see somewhere there, there was no sound, I'm going to text them, guys, what was happening to sound there? That's the compliment they receive. So, <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing it as unto man, you're going to be disappointed. It is like putting your trust in a man. He tells us not to put our trust in man. We are always going to be disappointed. Men change. Men are not like God. Men change. Praise the Lord. In Hebrews 12, 28, I'm just giving you scriptures, a few scriptures about serving about serving the Lord. Wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let us serve God. Let it be your sole purpose to serve God. Don't just be born again. It's not enough. Choose to serve God. There is a lot that you're missing. Choose to serve God. The happiest people on earth are people who serve God. Yes, there are people who serve God. You saw my parents when they came here. Clearly they are happy people. Didn't you see that? Very happy people, yes. You know, they inspire us. We even tell them, even their marriage still inspires us. You know, they've been married, what, 30 what years. But you know, it still inspires us when we see how happy they are. You know, for many couples, they don't know what to do when children are away. For them, they are on a debt. It's like a honeymoon when they are just the two of them in the house. They are very okay. They are very happy. Very happy with each other. But they've served the Lord. 
From the time they got born again, they've served the Lord. And I see it. I see the content, the contentment in them. You see it. Yes, we didn't have a lot, like I've told you. We didn't have many things that make people in the world happy. But we were a very happy family. Very happy family. For TV, we had books, I told you. Yeah, we had books. We all read books. Yeah, we would finish breakfast. And dad and mom have books there. And each of us has a book we are reading. And you finish and there were always books. People would visit our home. They're like, hey, you have a, a, a big bookshelf. You see? That is why we are not poor. We lacked, but man, the mindset was there. We were given books. We read. We read. My dad made us read. We read. Yeah, so there are many things that we may not have had, but we, I, I, I look at them and I'm like, wow, it's a great thing to serve the Lord. They are very happy. There is no damn worry that my dad may mistreat my mom. I've never thought about it. There is no damn thing that my mom will mistreat my dad. No. It's a great thing to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, let us serve him. Let us serve the Lord. Mark 10, 43. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister or your servant. Let's read it in NLT. But among you it should be quite different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. I was telling us in the morning, those that were here, not you, in the morning, the first service, I was telling people that our status changing in the world does not mean that it has changed in the kingdom. Actually, sometimes when our status changes in the kingdom, in the world, in the kingdom, it drops. Yes. Just that you became richer, you became a, a political figure, it doesn't mean that even God is running around getting you bodyguards. Yeah, because sometimes it feels that way. We've become important in the world, so we think that we've also become very important in the kingdom. No. And many times pastors treat us that way, so we also start feeling it that way. And you see, young children are there and they're like, we've never done this for Jesus. Jesus is always here. Pastor is telling us Jesus is always here, but pastor has never been that excited about Jesus. Now Mweshimiwa has come and pastor is ear to ear smiling and <laughs> you see? Yes, we are the ones who make these people think that they are, you know, they should come and sit and listen to the word. That's why I like Dr. Roden Howard. Dr. says many politicians have asked, can, can we come to your church? They want to speak during campaigns from around Florida. Is that time even their mayor? So they're like, okay, they want to come. They want to Okay, he says, okay, I'll allow them. I'll give them five minutes to speak to our people. That is, if they come on time, let service not begin when they are not there. They sit in the service. They listen to the word. Then when service is done, I'll give them five minutes to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, he says, then it's, this is not a political rally. This is a gathering of saints. Yes. Yeah, and one politician did that. She's a Christian. Yeah. Well, she did. She came. She attended the service and was there the whole service. Yeah. Because at times in the world we grow and we become proud. We never outgrow serving the Lord and we should never outgrow serving the Lord. Oh, pastor, I'm busy. Then you're too busy. Change. You're too busy. If you're too busy to serve the Lord, that is, that is too busy. That is too busy. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. You know, but I had this, there's a time we attend, we went for service at FEM, FEM, Faith Evangelistic Ministry, Evangelist Teresia Wairim. He said the first lady, that time she was still the second lady. She's the one in charge of flowers in the church. She's still serving. And that time she was wife to deputy president. And she serves in that church. She's, she's the one in charge of the flowers that you see there. I don't know if even up to now. But she's the one in charge. Every Sunday to make sure the church has flowers. And you see how when she gets in church, she kneels, she raises her hands, she, she's there. She forgets that she's this big person and what. It's actually people around who make, who, who take her as that big person. And I'm, of course we should give honor where it's due. You get what I mean? 
Yeah, but I mean, if it starts getting into our head, Jesus is telling us that you must be a servant. You must be a servant. You must first be a servant. That is the greatest. We should never outgrow. So many people come to churches, they are prayed for, they get jobs, then what do they do? Pastor, I'm so busy. My work is very demanding. My work is very demanding. (laughs) You know, you're trading on a very dangerous path. You're going to get lost and it will be hard to find yourself. 1 Samuel 17. In 1 Samuel 17, we see the story of David. David had been anointed as king. Remember David was anointed as king? The prophet came to their home. You know in those days it was a big deal if the prophet came to your home. A prophet came to their home. He was not there. He, imagine the prophet. They had said the prophet is coming. Gather your family. He was left out. That's how not important he was in that family. Yes. That's why he says in sin was I conceived. It's believed David, David, David's mom was, was not the real wife to Jesse. was either a concubine or some worker, a black lady, some, you know. Yes. So in sin or so, and they say, bring your sons. Of course, uh, that, that kind of one smells like sheep, smells of sheep. So the prophet would not like to see that one. Yes. At a choma picture. Yes. But you know, the prophet go to, even the prophet looked at Eliab and is like, this must be the one. Eliab looked good. You know, that's how people even choose in marriage. And a tall, dark, handsome man. <laughs> you realize that physique has nothing to do with marriage. I'm not saying choose who you like. Choose, choose, choose who you like. Hey, some of them are the real wife beaters. They are, yeah, they're better than muscles. <laughs> Oh, yes, he drives a BMW. He's, hey, he's going to be driving it and leaving you every two weeks, every <laughs> driving away. It is good to grow together in a marriage. Never admire someone because they are rich or they are tall or they are handsome. Make them handsome. Yes. Yeah. Many married people become handsome if the marriage is working well. The ladies become beautiful. Yeah, you realize it is something that can be worked on. Yes. Yeah. Take care of your husband. Take care of your wife. Yeah, eventually, like, eh, then she used to look. She, she just used to look like... Yeah, that's not how God chooses. And yeah, God will show us. And, 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 and many people, it is just like when many, many young people have an example of the man or the wife that they would want looking at those who are already married. Those who are already married have been worked on. You wouldn't want them when they, before they were married. Yes. Yes. Yes, they were not. They are not like that. Yes. Now we have been fed. We have been, we've been worked on. Yes, we've been worked on. There is somebody who has invested. You get what I mean? Yes. But if you saw us before we got married, you would be scared. Hmm? Find a, a somebody's wife called Pretty. Yes. But you see, before they were married, you're like, how did the parents choose a name like Pretty? <laughs> yes. Work was put in. Yes. So this cowboy, the one who was looking after sheep, and smelling like sheep, God was going to do a beautiful work in that boy. And he was going to become a king. But he was a servant. He was serving. And when he was chosen, to show you that that attitude, that servant's attitude, there in chapter 17, you'll see that after he was anointed, he didn't tell dad and the family, guys, I, 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 need, I, I need us to meet as a family in the evening when, when everybody, let, let's have a short meeting. I, I, just, I want to share something <laughs> Then after then, he's like, now guys, as you saw the prophet today, it became very clear. I, I, I've always wanted to tell you that it's in me, but <laughs> I'm king material. So maybe dad and these, my elder brothers, you can, 
you can put your resources together and get a shepherd for the sheep because from today, <laughs> uh, you've had, you know. I don't want to be found out there. I'm a king. Then I'm, I'm there looking at you. No. He went back to looking after his dad's sheep. He went back to look after his dad's sheep. He was called to go and play the harp for Saul when he had already been anointed king. So he knows Saul. God has given up on Saul. But he, he would go and serve Saul and play the harp for him. He did not... It did not make him proud. And even later, you know, you see how responsible he was because later in verse 20, he was sent to to go and take food for his brothers, to check on his brothers in battle. And what did he do? He left the sheep with a keeper. He got a keeper for the sheep. He didn't just say, Dad, (laughs) finally you've realized kings are meant to be in battle. This is a keeping me here with your sheep. Now finally dad, some sense is coming into you. I need to be at the battlefront. No. He got a keeper for the sheep. You know, to take care of his dad's sheep. That's how he was. And even after he defeated Goliath, you know, he still went back to play for Saul. You remember? And that's when he threw a spear towards him. But he still had that attitude. Humble yourself before the almighty God and he will exalt you in due time. Serving in the local church is one of the ways of us acting out that humility. That yes, in my place of work, I'm the COO, I'm the CEO, I'm everything that has C. Yeah. You know? Chief whip. But, <laughs> but I show up in church, I play the keyboard, I lead worship, I'm an usher, I'm in hospitality. I hold the camera. I do this. You serve God. That no matter how big we grow in the world there, our service to the Lord is still very important. And God values that. Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. Now let's see some of the benefits of us serving the Lord. Yeah? Number one is health and longevity. Health and? Exodus 23, 25 to 27. How many want to live in health? And how many want longevity? Now, it is part of the package when you choose to serve the Lord. Now, longevity that I'm talking about is not just having a long life. That was a life. (laughs) You know, I'm not talking about just having a long life. There are people that have a long life but full of misery. They keep saying, why don't I just die? Why don't no? I'm talking about a life that you are enjoying. A life where you know you sit down and you video call your children and you're happy with what is happening. A life where, you know, that's a long, a good long life. A good long life. That is what God desires. Praise the Lord. When Jacob was very old, he said, many but few and evil have been the days of my life. So many but he had not enjoyed them. So you can live for many days but not enjoy them. But God wants us to have a life of health and also to enjoy, to enjoy that length of life. And he shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Remember when we were talking about, were we, was it authority or what? But where I was sharing about the, the Hebrew word that he uses there for he shall take sickness away. It's like he shall cut off. It's like he shall cut off the supply. He shall, you know, he shall switch off. The word there is like to switch off. Shall switch off. So like that does not flow to you anymore. It does not flow to your side anymore. Praise the Lord. There shall nothing cast their young. In other words, no miscarry, no barren, no be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Why? Because they are taking off. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That the devil will always be shocked when he tries you. Hallelujah. That you will be in health. 
I know people in this ministry who have not gone to hospital since they started serving. Yeah. And they had conditions. They were sick. But they just started serving in one year. Pastor, I've not fallen sick. Two years. Pastor, I've not fallen sick. Three years. Pastor, I've not fallen sick. Yes. Why? You know, God, God is wiser than your bosses. Tell your neighbor, God is wiser than our bosses. If you are doing a very good job for your bosses, what do they do? They give you a health cover. Isn't it? Yes, because you're doing a good job. It's not for you. It's not that they want to take care of you. Yeah, they don't want to miss. They don't want you to be away. Yeah, <laughs> because if your health is taken care of, you can always be around and get make them more money. Now you see, you're, you're serving God, and you think He doesn't doesn't give you a health cover. Yes. So He's telling them, yeah, as long as they are serving God, this is going to happen. Then He says, He says the enemies. Your enemies, uh, you shall see their backs. Yeah? Your enemies, shall, there is going to be that protection for you. So you're going to live a healthy, long life. One of the examples of ministers who live this way were the ministers that Billy Graham served with in Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. It was, Billy Graham was the head, there's Cliff Barrows. He's the one who used to direct the crusades. He's the one, if you've watched videos, who used to invite Billy Graham to come on. After they've sung, no, that they would sing at the end. At the end, they would sing, Just as I am with one plea. Yes. So there's Cliff Barrows. Then there's George Bivali She. George Bivali She was the, the psalmist. He was the singer with the baritone voice. I sang for the people in the morning. How did he used to sing? Even Dr. Ali sang. You know, my dad had the cassette tapes. I would listen. George Bivali Shane was like, hey, the same song we sing and he sings it forever. So, <laughs> Blessed assurance Jesus is mine. And there are microphones always on the podium. Oh, what a fault is of glory divine air of salvation you know you could go home then come back for the crusade and the song is not there Arches of God of his peace Okay, now we need, we need to first learn to serve God for that longevity. Don't, don't sing like you've already, don't serve like you've already served. Yeah, yeah. Now, for you who are just starting to serve God, you just sing. This is my story. This is my song. <laughs> Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis are always ahead. <laughs> yeah? But once you start serving God and you realize longevity is coming, ah. Uh, you, you even first stand at the podium and you call somebody to come and adjust the microphone for you. You have all the time. <laughs> yeah. So. They, they, you know, they, were, they served God. Billy Graham Ministries is one of the ministries that really, really served God. And they used their resources. They used money. They used to really serve God. They are a ministry that had no scandal in them being audited, being like, of course, they are haters. Let me tell you, everyone will be hated. Yeah, but you know, you're not going to find that Billy Graham, they misappropriated money. You're not going to find... And those three men all lived. The youngest, I think, died at 92. That was Cliff Barrows. George Bivali, she died at, I think, 110. Wait, 16? 100? Then uh, Billy Graham himself was, what, 90? 96, I think, 96, 90. Yeah, 90-something. So look at that. I don't think that that was just a coincidence that people who served in the same ministry all lived a very long life. No! It was part of the blessing of serving the Lord. 
and serving diligently. And a number of people. I've seen Maurice Sarulo. He came here when he was 86. He served until. And he came from a life of being a thief, being a smoker, being. And at 15, he was chained. His life was turned around by God. And he gave himself to God. And he served God in many nations, over 100 nations around the world. And you could see up to that time he died, 80 what he was still serving the Lord. You get what I mean? Longevity. Yeah. Many people. T.L. Osborne at 89. And like I'm saying, it is not 89 years of pain. That is not longevity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are people who have lived for that long, but it is very painful. They are bitter. I know old people who are bitter. And they've just been full of bitterness. That is not what he's talking about. He's talking about a good life. One time I had a, I had a, no, I was watching, I think, the, the memorial service for T.L. Osborne. So, Kenneth Copeland was giving his tribute. And he said, T.L. Osborne, is a time T.L. Osborne goes and visits. And they, they have that outdoor jacuzzi. So, he tells, he tells, he tells, he tells Kenneth Copeland, he tells him, can you, can you, do you have extra bath gowns? And they say yes. And he tells the wife, Kenneth Copeland tells the wife, so they get them. And he says they sit in that water. And he says, T.L. Osborne just starts speaking. All the stories, the word, the word. Until his wife and, 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 and Kenneth Copeland's wife have to stop them. They're like, if these two sit together and start speaking about the word, they will stay there for days. We just have to stop them. Now, that is a man living a long life. In your old age, you sit and you still enjoy to talk the word and all the stories. And everyone who encountered him, you, you would see that. People he would take around, the good things he would tell them, the stories, the things he compiled, the things he talks about. He was living a full life. It was not just something that, it was not just I'm here for many years and I'm not enjoying. No. People who were around him said he liked, he liked nice things. He liked art. He used to collect art. He had flowers. He had all those things. And he would still spend time. He worked out. Till he always worked out. He worked out. He played tennis. He went to the gym. He joked. He, did, he, did, he had a long life. He enjoyed his life. He enjoyed his life. He was busy. I saw that there are times there are a program that the, the daughter used to interview him. And, and, and then they were saying that surprisingly, when many people see us on set like this, they think that we see each other very often. They're like, no, we are so busy. The daughter is doing crusades, he's doing crusades. And by that time, he's in his 80s. He's saying, we hardly see each other. These are people enjoying their life. He's not just an old man seated there missing his daughter. He's, Nowadays, you don't come to see me. No, he's a man living, that's a man enjoying life. He has a life. He still has a life. That's one thing that you're also going to learn in Prima. Hey, having a life. Yeah. Many of you are suffering. Your marriages struggle because your parents have no life. Yeah. They always want to hang around. Are you coming for Easter? Are you, uh, you know, like, they don't have a life. Yeah. Their children left the house and now they don't know what to do with their life. Yeah. Yes. So from early in marriage, you learn to have a life. Yes. If your husband likes watching football, let him watch football with the boys. Yes, let that girl go for makeup. The other day, my wife was telling me there's even primer. They do even, there's even primer for the, for the face. There is. Yeah. Now, why, why do you argue that this is not a building? Well, you know, there's foundation, there's primer. What is, it's just a roof left. <laughs> Plaster. Yeah, let, let your wife go. Let her be roofed, you know. As <laughs> Yeah. And you know, that is one thing that you find among people who are dating. And many times that is when people mess up and that is when people fornicate. Yeah. They don't have a life outside their boyfriend or girlfriend. There is no life. Yes. They are sick. Oh, he went to Mombasa for work. Imagine, he, how, how could he just go? How could he just go? <laughs> you know, have a life. Yeah. Now, the, the, the extreme problem is when you just have a life. You know, there are those who just have a life. <laughs> They've got into a relationship. They are never there. They don't call the girl. They don't. And they're like, but she found me with this life. 
man, you should not have chosen her. You're wasting her time. You get what I mean? Yes, it is responsibility you've taken on. If you've asked her out, you should be willing to make phone calls. Yeah, you should be willing to show up for debts. You get what I mean? Yes, you don't, you don't say, you go, ah, she knows I'm a busy person. Then don't waste her time. Is she the one who asked you out? It may be. But why did you accept? <laughs> Nowadays it may be. It may be that she's the one who asked you out. But, but you, why did you accept? <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. So there needs to be a balance. We have a life, but we need to know this person is priority. But we should, there should also be, we should also have a healthy, what? Individual life. Also healthy. You get what I mean? Yes, there is a time we are watching football and my wife is there watching with me and she forgets that she is supporting with the team we are supporting. <laughs> <But you know. laughs> Even my daughter, my daughter the other time, I think we were watching African Cup. Oh, there, then she celebrated, then she says, don't say, then she's like, Baba, is that our team? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this is my life. <laughs> yes. Hey. Yeah, but my wife knows to say, oh, sorry. Yeah, they've beaten you again. <laughs> yeah, they scored again. Yes, longevity, yeah, health and longevity. It's very important when you serve the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's true. I've seen, I believe, I believe that's how God has sustained me also. I've told you about how I was healed supernaturally. But I have lived a healthy life. You know, for, I've been in this country for 10 years, yeah? I've never missed a service that I'm sick. Isn't that a miracle? At least there should be one day like, oh, pastor had a fever so he could not come to church. Never have I missed a service because I was out there. So never. Not even once. If I missed a service, I was not in the country. You know, something like that. Yes. And I'd not gone to India for treatment. So that... <laughs> Clearly, God enjoys what I preach. Yeah, he's preserved me to continue preaching. You know, I'm like, oh, pastor... He, your preaching would be nice if you didn't have many stories. God likes it. Let me tell you, God likes it. Yeah, there, there are many churches that don't have many stories. Just go and find. Actually, there are most of them don't have many stories. They just have point one, point two, point. Yeah, go and go to those ones. Hallelujah. Yeah, for me, I'm here for those who love stories. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Philippians 1, 7. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my bones and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. This, this are, if, in verse 5, if you read in, in uh, NIV, in verse 5, he's, he thanks them for their partnership with him in the gospel. Now, Paul is writing to these Philippians and saying, they've partnered with him in the gospel. They have served Paul. They've served with Paul. They've served Paul. And he's saying, you are partakers of my grace. Now, today people rubbish such things, but it is scripture. It is Bible. Praise the Lord. Now, the, where God has called you, when you serve in the place that God has called you to, you are a partaker of that grace. You are a partaker of that. I know people who have become debt free just serving in this ministry. And eventually, they, people who didn't think that, how do you even come out of debt? They are so much in debt. And eventually, they started saying, Pastor, we are paying off this, we are paying off this. We are. Then eventually, they are debt-free. We are a debt-free ministry. And we don't have very good words for debt in this ministry. You know that? Yeah, we don't have very good, we are just like the Bible. Have you ever seen a good word for debts in the Bible? And when you go, I'll help you to get whatever you borrow. You'll borrow and they will agree to give you the amount that you... There is nowhere in the Bible that God blesses people with, with, with debt. Nowhere. And whoever you borrow from shall not refuse. No, nowhere. The Philistines shall give you a thousand cows and you'll pay back 1,200. But I'll make the period very easy for you. No, there is nowhere. He says the borrower is slave to the lender. Yes. Oh, no man anything but to love them. 
Yes, he, everything that talks about date in the Bible is bad, bad, bad. Until it's like a debtor is a sinner. They have to be forgiven their debt. <laughs> Says in the seventh year, you shall forgive. <laughs> hey. Hey. Please, make sure that you never, you never need forgiveness in that area. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So, so that is grace upon this ministry. So you're serving, believe that you partake of the same grace. We believe in the supernatural. We believe in healing. Partake of that. How many people have been healed here? And past serving here and they've been healed. Even I, during Hotspot what I remember there are testimonies, Hotspot unplugged. Still, I think someone commented with the testimony of healing. But healings, you had Kevin testified of healing during the other, the, the other Hotspot unplugged. Said he had a pain here and he had tried to exercise, he had tried to do jumping jacks and what, and on set during that service, he got healed. That pain left number of healings that we have seen and how many churches have we gone to that have also started to see healings by just pa participating in our many churches have had testimonies we've had testimonies from pastor Victor Osen and what about what is happening in their church pastor Kefa we've had from Duncan and Jesse just working with us churches where some of them were not even experiencing miracles the power of God and now they are on fire they are going out doing crusades. They are seeing the sick kill. They are seeing the lame walk. That's grace that is upon us. So you serve, you partake of that grace. The greatest, the greatest way you see ministers who have been made or mentored by people, the ones that stand out and you're like, oh, so and so, so and so is so powerful. Like, oh, they were mentored by so and so. You realize that they served that person. Yes. That's a, it is not that they were mentored by do this, do this, do this. No. Many times it is the ones that served. They are the ones that served. You know, we were, we were looking at, a, I think we were with hospitality team, but we were looking at a video for one of the churches in Nigeria. It's called Koza Church, Koza, Common Wealth of Zion Assembly. One of the most excellent churches on the planet. Like when you talk about excellence, they are up there. And the pastor is called Beodum Fatiimbo. So he hosts Bishop David Oyedepo and he tells them he used to be a drummer in Winner's Chapel. Those years when Winner's Chapel was here, he used to drum for Bishop David Oyedepo. Now seeing the grace that is flowing in his life. Praise the Lord. Okay, talk about Ben Hinn, Pastor Ben Hinn. Where are all the people that were around Catherine Kuman, that Catherine Kuman laid hands on, that Catherine Kuman walked with? Where are they? Pastor Benin didn't even ever have a one-on-one -on -one with Catherine Kuhlman. Never. She died before he could. But clearly everyone can tell his... You know, you go and watch Catherine Kuhlman meetings and you watch Pastor Benin. They sound the same. They sound in the manifestations of the power of the Holy Ghost. How come she carried that grace? He carried that grace. He used to serve there. He used to serve in those meetings. Never meeting her but serving serving in the worship team. He used to help bring in people like that. You know, I was hearing the testimony of even Bishop Doug Heward Mills. Archbishop Duncan Williams was talking about him and Archbishop Duncan Williams says when their church was young, when their church was, when Archbishop Duncan Williams, yeah, their church was, it was still young. Bishop Doug used to bus people, students from university and take them to church on his own account, his own money. He was not a pastor by then. By says he used to get people, put them on buses and he would bring them. Now today you see his ministry, how buses are bringing people you look at. But you realize, he served a grace like that. He served like that. We partake. So there is a blessing in serving God. And you know, some of us may say, Pastor, I have been serving God, but it looks like my life is not moving. It looks like things are not. You try to stop. Stop for two years. You realize that your life was actually moving. Yes. You realize that. You know, there are many times, you know, familiarity is something that is to humans. Familiarity. When we are in a place, we stop feeling, we stop enjoying the good that is there. It's until we lose it, then we realize actually things were better. Yes. Yeah. Just try it. I've given you permission. Try it for two years. Stop serving. Just go. You will realize that things were better. You had a better community. You had better people around you. And yes, Things were tough, but you realize that the blessing of God 
put a restraint on what the devil could have done, it would have been worse. Realize it would have been worse. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. You partake of the grace. Hallelujah. You partake of the grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I've served my spiritual father for over 13 years. And there are many things that I see in the ministry with ease. Just because of that. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I, I've said this over and over. There is nowhere I have ever gone to minister and the power of God didn't move. Nowhere. No, it's a matter of saying, come. I don't need to. You know, there are ministers who are like that. There are ministers who it's, it's a surprise when the power of God moves. Yes, I've sat down with pastors like, hey, in that place, ah, people were falling, the power of God was touching people. That's not my story. As long as I show up, the power of God is going to show up. But that's my spiritual father. Yes. That's my spiritual father. There is nowhere. You know, at least somebody's finger will shake. <laughs> yeah, but that I went to minister somewhere and nothing happened. Or oh, I called out the sick and no one got healed. No. That does not happen. And it will never happen. Yes. But I have served that man and I serve him till today. You get what I mean? Yes. I serve him. Yes. I love it. I love to serve him. I love to. Yes. I even plead with him many times when, when we go like to, for the conferences. Like I tell him, I, I, I'm not here to, to preach. Like I tell him, I don't want to preach. I just want to be here. Let me drive you. Let me. Like that's what I've come for. That's what I want. That's what I've come for. Yes. And as long as I'm driving him, of course, I'm not going to fuel. I'm not going, I'm not going to do all those things. You get what I mean? Yes. I like that. Yes. Yeah. So, it's, and, and you will see that. You see, we, we know Reinhard Bonke. Reinhard Bonke, the person that leads the ministry Reinhard Bonke founded was, is Daniel Kolenda. Where are all the people that Reinhard Bonke laid hands on? How don't we know them? But Daniel Kolenda served Reinhard Bonk. Daniel Kolenda was actually a, a what? Personal assistant. He first came, worked in their garage, went to their school, became personal assistant. And he said, there is a time he was describing what it meant. He was being asked about spiritual fatherhood and what. And he just said, ah, nowadays it's just excitement. Like everyone says, this is my spiritual father. Like they don't know. And up to today you will see he's hesitant. He doesn't spoke, speak about that so much. Yeah, but you could tell, he tells that people will not take it. Yeah. But he said, yeah, he said that when I served brain at Bonky, I didn't ever know that I would ever preach. I didn't ever know that I would ever be given a platform. No. And I was told clearly, mine was to make sure his shoes are clean, his clothes are in order, his documents are in order. I book the war tickets. Like, that was his work. Get him his water. And you see, the, there was a picture where Reinhard Bonke was preaching in India. And it is raining. And Daniel Kolenda is standing there with an umbrella. And it was raining on him. And, his, and that was it. And today, clearly, when you see Reinhard, when you see Daniel Kolenda, you know, you can't deny that the man is anointed. You know, you can't say he was just appointed. You've seen, you know, you, you, you can't fake miracles. You know, you can be appointed, but you cannot go and fake miracles because you're appointed. You get what I mean? But you've seen him pray for deaf ears on the platform. You've seen him pray for lame people. You've seen the power of God and he's ministering. But you see, he served that grace. He still draws crowds. He still draws crowds. He does crusades. Some of the biggest crusades in the world today, still Daniel Kolenda. That is grace. That is real grace. Yeah, that's, that's the picture. That's Reinhard Bonke. There's the very picture I had seen, there was one where it was at the front, the, that, that what? Yeah, the front view. And you would see Daniel Kolenda under the rain, under the rain, on the same crossing, under the rain. That was in India. And you see, that was his work. He was not assistant evangelist. And mind you, God had already touched his life. You know, Daniel Kolenda was touching the Brownsville revival. Yeah, so he was not here that he was new to ministry. By the time he was this, he had just resigned pastoring a church. He was pastoring a church. Yeah, you go read about his story. Yeah, he was a pastor. So he resigned to pastor a church to hold an umbrella. When we come to the house of the Lord, our status in the world many times means nothing. We should be children and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, so these, these, we receive grace. Uh, 
Number three, they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish, yeah? They shall flourish. Psalm 92 verse 13. They shall flourish. They shall bear fruit even in old age. The happiest old people you find, you realize the majority of them serve in church or go to church. Have you ever realized that? No matter the church, they may not go to your tongue speaking and jumping church, but <laughs> you will hear that. You, you hang around them, they say, oh, the vicar is coming. You know, you'll, you'll hear something. Hey, bye, today is day for practice. Today is day for choir. You, you'll hear something. Go look at those people who are in their 80s and, and, and you really love, you love their lives. They look, there is always a story about them serving in church. Yes. Hey, have you, have you talked to the reverend? Have you, there is just going to be something. Yeah, he says they will bear fruit even in their old age. Yeah? Yes. They'll, yeah. Yeah? Bring forth fruit in their old age. They shall flourish. They that serve the Lord. They that serve the Lord. It is a good thing to serve the Lord. It is a good thing to serve the Lord. Psalm 89, 20 to 24. Serving the Lord gives us immunity also. I think we've talked about health and longevity. It's a bit similar. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him, you see, a servant, with whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Yeah, there is preservation, there is immunity that God gives you as a servant of the Lord. Many things, I'm telling you, many servants of the Lord have been protected. And you see, normally when we talk about servants of God, people just think apostle, pastor, evangelist. And there are people who are serving whose positions are never even recognized. But the immunity they have because of that, you realize a whole clan was wiped out, but they are still alive. Praise the Lord. It, it's just a very important thing to serve the Lord. Then, Five, you will be honored by God himself. John chapter 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. If any man serve me. He was not just talking about the 12, even beyond. He was talking about you and I who are serving even now. Can you imagine? If any man serve me, he says, my father will honor that one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you see, Jesus honored the ones who served. The 12 disciples were so special to Jesus. They, he had a special place for them. They were not treated like, like the what? Like the rest of the 5,000. I was telling people in the morning, you see the 5,000. Jesus gave them food without vufu. <laughs> hey, you can imagine the kikuyus that day. They suffered. <laughs> Fish and bread. And by, he said they were breaking, not they were scooping. Yeah. They were just breaking. He didn't say soup multiplied. It's the fish. <laughs> vufu was preserved. <laughs> For the last supper, you had the last supper. He said, whoever dips in, hey, in the last supper, there was dipping. <laughs> you dip the bread. <laughs> that was for a special few. That was for the select few. Yes, they could dip. Yes. So I said, it's not wrong when a pastor treats his core team better. Some people think that is ubaguzi. No. No. It is honor. honor, honor, honor. If honor is due, you give it. He said, I can't look at people who have served with me in ministry for long and what and, 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 and treat them like, you know. Yeah, there are people. I was telling people in the morning that people want to sit where Anne is seated. Hmm? You know, some of these people have been here for Anne, early. Many of these people were here when there was nothing to believe in this ministry. You get what I mean? Yes. Some of you have come when there are lights. At least it looks like a growing ministry. <laughs> You've come when there are some cars parked down there. These people were there when we had no microphones. These people were there when the pastor didn't own a suit. You get what I mean? When the pastor's pants were faded. 
not by design. <laughs> Longi- <laughs> longevity. Yes, longevity. <laughs> not the good one, yeah, but longevity. Yes, but they were there. You see, at times people who come later, you're not sure of them, you're not sure why they are there. You get what I mean? Yes, but there are people who came and, you know, we all, we carried things together with them. It rained on us together. It did. You value those people. You value, Jesus valued the disciples. So these ones are, yeah, where I am, you will also be. These people. Now you serve God. You serve God. You see, the life, what we do with the death of Jesus Christ determines where we will spend eternity. What we do with the death of Jesus Christ. What we do for Jesus Christ determines how we will spend eternity. Yes. I've talked about that when we're talking about the judgments. Yes? Yeah. I've talked about, you go and listen to eternal, eternal what? I mean, what is it called? Elementary, yeah, elementary doctrines. Go and listen to elementary doctrines and you'll see. Yes. He says that we shall give account. We are going to see the scripture. He says we shall give account of whatever we did. So, for your salvation, for your righteousness, there is nothing that is required of you. Like, even if you never serve God, you will go to heaven. You will go to heaven. That is guaranteed if you're, if you're born again. That's all you need. You just need to be born again. You never need to sweep a church. You never need to give money. You never need to give tithe. That is not required. But how we will spend eternity. See, why does he have that bima judgment? Why does he have the rewards? Why does he have... Yes, that is a judgment that is only for believers. That one is not for non-believers. Hallelujah. And he will honor us. And God honoring us, you see, many times it even starts here. It starts on earth. I was seeing this, the, the gentleman that passed on, General Ogola. Yes, you see how that man has been honored. But that man served God. You get what I mean? He's not a pastor, he's not a reverend, but he served God and it's clear and everyone knows that he served God. It is not just a story because somebody has died, we need to say good things about them. It's not that. You can hear the stories, you can hear from his family, you can hear from his children. The man served God. And even here, God honored him. First of all, by becoming, he was what? What what is that title for? Chief of Defense Forces. Yes. So for his, his being honored to be given that position, he's being honored. And many times you see that God will honor you even here on earth. Yeah, you will get promotion that humanly speaking you don't qualify for. You get what I mean? We've had testimonies here. We've had testimonies like that. Uh, there's a time Audrey was telling us, Audrey, is she back? Audrey is still in India. She traveled. But you know, she was telling us there's a time she was given she was given, she was given like, was it a scholarship and what? That she did not, she doesn't qualify for in the place of work. It is higher people that are meant to be given that. And we've had such testimonies many times. God will honor you. Praise the Lord. God has honored me as a person. God has honored me. I stand in many places. Many people listen to me. And sometimes I'm in awe. I'm like, God, what qualification do I have to sit in some of these places to hear some of the things that I'm hearing for these people who are buying my air tickets? What qualification do I have? And my only thing is that, my only answer is that I serve the Lord. That's it. It, By education, no. By where I came from, no. By connections, no. It is just that I serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I know that. You know, there's a time, there's a time, I don't know when. How many years ago? Four, five years ago? There's a time a family came and they said, uh, we want you to come and pray for our, for our family. We have a family meeting somewhere near Bondo in Kisumu. And they're like, it is just one day, man of God. We will not take your time. It's just one day. And I was just like, wow, they are calling me a man of God. They, they don't want to waste my time. You get know what I mean? There is a time I looked for people to waste my time and I could not find. I, <laughs> they are just, oh, they don't want to waste my time. So they say, so we are sorry because at that in the morning at that time, we found there was, the, the KQ flight was just very early, so we decided to get Jumbo Jet, but you'll come back with KQ, oh, man of God. And they are very, yeah, you'll come back the same day. And they paid my ticket, they flew me from here, I went, I ministered to them, they flew me back in that evening, they gave me a fat envelope, they picked me from the airport, they, and I'm like, God has honored me. Yes, a boy, like, like there is no reason, these are not people, if you ask me, before that, I didn't know these people even two years before. I didn't know them. I, like, 
I'm not the most eloquent person. I'm not like, like, why? How many ministers of God are in this nation? I'm just a boy who came. Age, all these people were older than me. All of them were older than me. And were calling me. They are older than me. But they're there. Now we have the man of God. That is God. And even you, as you serve the Lord, you will see God honor you in various places. God will, in your family, in, you will see it. God will honor you. He says when Jesus grew, he obtained favor with men and God. Praise the Lord. Your favor shall not only be with men. Your favor shall be with God. Hallelujah. When you have favor with God, it's impossible that you will lack favor with men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I want us to go through these very quickly. Why serve the Lord? Tell your neighbor, why should you serve the Lord? Ask them, are you serving the Lord? Tell them not to answer. If they started to start, I tell them not to answer. I said earlier, it is not what the church can do for me. It is what should I do for and in the church. What should I do? You should find yourself. You know, we used to sing, when he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. Yes, I should be somewhere working for the Lord. Now, those are songs that we wrote off. We thought we had got deeper revelation. But you should be somewhere working for the Lord. We should be somewhere working for the Lord. Let me tell you, that's the only reason we are here on earth. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, you see, God didn't call us to work for him. God just wants to love us. So he can love you better in heaven. You think that he needs you to be on earth to love you? <laughs> he can love you better. You're even closer. Every morning you will wake up. You know. You, the, the, the. He left you here for a purpose. He left you here to occupy until he comes. He left you here to do something for the Lord. And that is why Jesus also, when he came, he said, I work while it is still daytime, before the night comes. And Paul said, woe unto me if I not preach the gospel, for necessity is laid upon me. Paul says, I labored more than thee all, yet not I, but the grace of God that worked in me. All these guys are talking about working for the Lord. Yes, I must go to other cities also. I'm a, they worked for the Lord. Yes, they took it. Paul says he counted it. He, 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 what? An honor, a privilege to be counted worthy, to be a servant of the Lord. Yeah, that to him, that was a great honor. For him to be counted worthy, to be a servant of the Lord. He was a servant of the Lord. He served God. He loved that. So you should be somewhere serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I was telling us that as a church, we want to increase our conversion rate. Praise the Lord. Yes, we want you get born again and get something to do very quickly. Get something to do. You get what I mean? Do probation as you do it. Hallelujah. As you go through the get set classes, there is something that you can do. You don't need to wait to finish the get set classes. You get what I mean? There is something that you can start doing. And that is also one of the ways to retain people. Many young believers fall off because they get born again. Then we take them through rigorous classes for 15 years. Then we say, now you qualify to be an usher. So, but, but you know... So many of them fall off, but when they come and you show them you have a responsibility, you know, that sense of responsibility gi gives, you, gives you a belonging, you know, a sense of belonging. That's, that, that, and, and that is what we should do. Hallelujah. Bishop Oyedepo was asked, what, you know, because like many nights he just sleeps two hours. So they're like, what do you take? Do you take coffee to stay awake? You work a lot. What do you take? What do you take? And he said, responsibility. Yeah. He said it takes responsibility. When you have responsibility, you don't need coffee. You don't need caffeine when you have responsibility. You just show up because you have responsibility. Hallelujah. Yes. How do I show up for 10 years? Responsibility. I have a responsibility. Praise the Lord. I show up on Sunday. I preach to services like this. I have other meetings. I finish my Sunday very late. Monday I show up again. How do I show up? I have responsibility. It's responsibility. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is, this is the third time I'm preaching this weekend. You know, yesterday I was preaching in the teens class. I'm preaching here now. I'm preaching. Uh, I, I preached in the morning. I'm preaching now. I'm preaching tomorrow. 
responsibility. Hallelujah. So, when you serve the Lord, take it as your responsibility. Let it be a real responsibility that you can't leave it for anything. Let your family know. Our families know. They can't put a family meeting on Sunday. They know that. They know not to put anything on Monday. Because it's serious. We are going to tell them we can't make it. Yes. In the early days, of course, you would see a bit of... But eventually they realize that we are not changing. This is serious to us. The way their work, their office is serious to them. We never put meetings on Wednesday morning. You, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, why, why should meetings be put on church? But you know, you never put them on Wednesday at 11 a.m. You never say we have a family meeting at 11 a.m. They say, ah, no, people will be at work. But no one says people will be at church. Yeah, they should start thinking that people will be at church also. It's, a, it's very serious to us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So number one, why you should serve the Lord is he created you for it. He created you for it. You don't have to have a title to serve God. Serving God is not a gift. It is a choice. Tell your neighbor it's a choice. Yeah, it is a choice. Yes, Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. So whoever is not serving God, clearly it seems evil to them. Yes. They've been in church 10 years. So they are doing nothing. They just show up and give offering and go home. Yes, it seems. So if it seems evil to you, you address your neighbor. Tell them if it seems evil to you. Yeah, choose who you will serve this day. Safaricom. Unilever. Uh, KBC, Sharia Kenya. Kenya. <laughs> Choose who you will serve today. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Yes, that is one thing that I knew from my parents. You see, I hear men people say, hey, in our family, if you refuse to go to church, you would be cane. For me, I don't even know how to have the thought. I didn't know that you can have that thought. I didn't know that you're allowed to have that thought. That one I didn't know. Yes, I, I don't know what would happen. Maybe you would die. I don't know what happens. Because I didn't, I didn't dare have the thought that I'm not going to church. You know, we went for functions and we came back home at 2 a.m. Yes. And in the morning, we were up very early and we went to church. We came and napped after church. Church was a must. I told you this. What you, sh what you make optional, the next generation will not value. And I'm so glad that my parents did that. They were, you see, Bishop Isaiah says he's setting a standard of no excuse. A pattern of no excuse. So I'm sure my parents many times were very tired. But they are like, if we don't do this, these children will one day think that going to church is something you, it can be optional. Yeah, what you don't, what you don't make, what, what, yeah, what you make optional, the next generation will take not serious. So if you're a parent and you skip church here and there, one day you're like, ah, you know, we are tired, you know. Don't come to me later when you're saying, Pastor, I pray for my children to start going to church. Don't come to me. You showed them. You showed them. Some of the things you don't do today, it's because your, your parents showed that it was optional. Yeah. But they showed that it was optional. Your parents showed that it was optional. It was that. Yeah. Many of you don't brush before you go to bed. Because your parents did it once in a while. When they ate bad food for supper. But you see, it is not optional. You get what I mean? So we know, so we know. Now, now, now we have children and they know that now. They know, yeah, they, before going to bed, they know, yeah, we must brush. I must brush my teeth before going to bed. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 I'll help you. I'll help you. Doors while you brush, I'll help you. Yes. I'll not be there babysitting them at 15, at 16. But if they know it's not optional. Yes. They will know that. Yesterday she took tea. Without sugar. And you know she, she used to take things without sugar. It is these aunties who have introduced her to sugar. You, your aunties and uncles, yes, spoiling her. <laughs> yeah, that is so yes, she was given. She's like, add some sugar. And you know, in unison with my wife, we are like, sugar? She said, I'm full. Ha <laughs> 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 
<laughs> she said I'm full. <laughs> yes. So choose it is a choice. Yes. We are not we are not gifted to serve the Lord. So we are not here every day because we are gifted. We have a title. No, we chose. We chose. You know there are people who have even come here and pastor, where can I start? You remember Pastor Agi right now is a pastor. It's not by surprise that Pastor Agi is. But Pastor Agi does many things very well. Pastor Agi came. Pastor Agi used to sing. She used to sing in worship team. She used to. That's what she used to do. You know? But when she came and joined ministry, she asked, Pastor, where is the greatest need? I don't just want to join the worship team just because I can sing. Where is the greatest need? Have you ever done this and this? No. But that's the other great. I can learn. She started She's made posters. She's served in the office. She's, she's done whatever. And Pastor Agi is somebody that I can call and tell to do anything. On sh- anything. Anything. There is a time where she would go to an extent. Now, I, that one I had. You know, one day, there is a Zoom meeting they had. She was charging her disciples. So she was meant to send me a report, a Zoom meeting, a recordings, but she sent me the wrong one. So I listened to all of it. So now I had. So she was telling me, so there are many times... You know, like, sometimes we need, like, an abrupt poster. You know, you know, we just need something that it has not been planned. And like, Pastor Agi, we need this and this. You know, now we hear, oh, Pastor Paul is in the, is in the country. Tomorrow we can have him at Ratsi. Make a post and all this. And, you know, sometimes, of course, she, also, she has her life. She has things she does. She needs to do her long nails. She needs to... You've <laughs> and, and primer. And what? Foundation. Roofing, highlighter, <laughs> and great half feet. Not greater. Uh, but you know, <laughs> but you know, so you know, she said there are many times she would use her money to outsource, she would pay people to do work so that in the end she presents work. Pastor, it's here. Like, no, I don't like that one. You get what I mean? You can imagine. I didn't know about that. And she didn't do it to she didn't ever come past her. You don't even know what we go through. Sometimes we pay our own money. I only got to know that because of that. And in that, in that video she sent, she was charging people to take their responsibility seriously. She says, if pastor tells me something, I'm not going to, I, I, I will even spend my own money and I will go, I will go do this and I will go do it. I will, and you know, and that is it. She can be relied on. She can be counted on. So is it her calling to spend her own money for things for church? It is a choice. It is a choice. So sometimes when you see some of the testimonies, yeah, and of course it's not just Pastor Agi. Everyone you admire here who are serving and you're seeing their life is thriving. Yeah. Choose to serve God. It's a choice. It's a choice. People are married, they have children, they have businesses, they have... And you're like, how are they here? They have chosen. He says you are God's workmanship. Another version says God's masterpiece. It's like God has woven you together. You are a masterpiece, yes? God's handiwork. God created you for good works, which he has ordained that we should walk in them. God created you for this. He created you to serve him. Get in the media team. Get in the... Ushering, get in worship team, get in hospitality, get everywhere, train yourself. I'm so glad that I have served in church since I was very young. Yes, since before I was a teenager, I have always served. So I don't have a life of not serving. And I enjoy it. I have served. I've told you I've been an usher. I've been in a place where we didn't have a title for me. But at least I woke up, I swept the church. Dusty church, we had a dusty church. We didn't have a tiled church. So I would wake up and go there early. And I would have to carry water. We didn't have piped water at church, where my church was. And we fetched water. We fetched water from a manual borehole. I used to pump with my hands. Yes, like this. And carry those two 20-liter jerry cans. Take them up to church. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Until all my hair is gray. Then I would get that water and sprinkle in the church, sprinkle in the church very early. Then I run home and dress up. Then I come and arrange seats and welcome people. Then I sit on the percussion. And then, because they have holes down, it's raising dust <laughs> on my black pants. I look like I'm sweeping the church again. Yes, but I did that faithfully. 
No later time came, we were like, oh, let's make the flow of the church. We mixed cow dung and soil and ash to make the flow. I did that. Yes, I did that. Put on the church to avoid dust. And I did it gladly. Then a time came for planting trees. Up to now, I was even showing my daughter when we went to the church. I showed them that we planted those trees. That tree, that tree. We planted them. I was here planting those trees. I would cut grass. Then I would go soul winning. I did all that. Yes, I did all that. I served as an usher. I go to high school, I served as an usher. I served in the worship team. Went for all those rehearsals. I led prayers. I served in intercession team. I served guests. I've done everything that I could put my hand on. There is no time that I was just seated in church. And I believe that some of the blessings that I enjoy today are because of that. Yes, I believe God has brought a good team around me here in this church who are serving me. But I'm so sure it is because of the men of God I've served in the previous the men of God that I've served, the churches where I have served and I've given my all. Serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a choice. Hallelujah. Amen. Then number two, my church family needs my service. You are the body of Christ. Christ is the anointed one. Each one of you is a unique vital part of it. That's what he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 in the Passion Translation. You are the body of the anointed one. And each of you is unique and vital. Tell your neighbor, you are unique and vital. There is no one like you. Yes. Yes. So your service, no one is going to do, somebody is going to, no one, you see people are told that if you don't do something, God will replace you with somebody. It is true God will replace you with somebody, but they are not going to do your part. It's not going to be your exact, yours was cut out for you. Yes, if you refuse to preach and you're an evangelist, God will bring another evangelist. But we are going to miss you. you get, it is like a musician. It's like if you have an orchestra or you have a what? Quartet. Or what are they called? Wherever we have, we need a, a number of vocalists. You get what I mean? Of course you can take out one, the baritone, and bring in another one. They are going to do it, but it is going to be them. We are going to miss. The other one is unique. No one can sing like you. That is your voice. You may all be doing tenor, but yours is yours. You get what I mean? And somebody who is keen, who is used to you people, can listen to that group and tell so and so is missing. They are not in that team. That is how we are right now. Yours is very important. You are an usher. You, the way you usher is not how the other person ushers. And yours is important and we need it. God wanted you to add color to the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. You are important. We need you. So tell, why must I serve the church? Because we need you. As the church, we need you. You're important. Your service is important here. And that is why we keep asking some of you, when are you signing up to serve? Why would we be asking you if we didn't need you? Yeah, it's because we need you. The body needs you. We can't do it all on our own. Hallelujah. Yes. So tell yourself, my church needs me. Then number three, I owe everything to Christ. Everything to Christ. Romans 12, 1 tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies. Why? Because everything that you are, yeah, you owe it to Christ. Your talents, your wisdom, your education, your geographic advantage. You owe it to God. Praise the Lord. We are in a place where you can wake up and drive from your home at 4 a.m. and show up at church. There are countries where that is not possible. You get what I mean? You owe it to God. There are things that I think about. and You know, there are many times, oh, pastor, there is so and so, so and so wants to come and wants to see you. And, what. and there are times I'm like, let me go and see them. And I'm like, yes, that flexibility I can have. I owe it to God. Yes. I thank God that I don't, I was not somewhere where I would be held up. So I owe it to God. There are times I rush on, you know, you hear something, you know, I'm tired, I'm what, but I hear, oh, there's somebody, they are sick or something that happened. And I'm like, I have to go there. We have to go. My, we have to go. We have to, to do this. And many times I think about it, I'm like, I'm so glad God has given me a car, I can go. It has fuel, I can go. I have life, I can go. I'm here, I can go. Sometimes even when you feel tired, when you feel what, you feel like, I owe this to God. If I don't use it to serve his people, then what should I use it for? Praise the Lord. I have this life. I have this health. I should use it for God. Your talents, 
How many talents have people used and they have been a blessing to us here? Hallelujah. You owe it to God. You're not self-made. You're not self-made. Praise the Lord. You're not self-made. Number four, serving makes my life meaningful. Mark 8.35 If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of good news, of the good news, you will find true life. You will find true life. My parents were here testifying. I'm telling you they have found true life. Their biggest dream before they got married. You see how when people are getting married, their biggest dream is to go to Maldives and what? For my parents, they told you when they were here, theirs was, can we have children who all love God? Is that possible? Because they grew up in non-Christian families, not born again. So that was their desire. Is it possible to raise that all your children are born again? Like that was their biggest dream. They, they've served God. They've served God all this time as growing up. And I believe that right now, they are seeing true life. Like my dad says, I can, my children can be anywhere in the world and I know that wherever they are, they are living for God. Five children, all of them. There is no one I'm worried about. I'm not sending their siblings say, go preach to so and so. No, there is no one like that. You get what I mean? They are all serving God wherever they are. Don't you think he's a happy man? And he tells us, whenever we meet for family meetings, he's like, my life is full. That's what he tells us. He tells us, I'm a very satisfied man. He says, that was my prayer. He says he's very satisfied. Hallelujah. When you serve the Lord, that is where there is a real meaning in life. Because what you are doing is for eternal value. If whatever you are doing is going to be demolished one day, it is going to be swept away one day, it's going to be in the past, then you've not found real meaning to life. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. To understand unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor in the Lord is not in, is not in vain. So, I said this to the people in the morning. But if you're here and you feel like no one has ever said thank you to you for serving the Lord, I'm here to say thank you. And I tell you, God also says thank you. He has said your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yeah, it's true. You may not have heard it from anyone. You may not have heard it from a pastor. But thank you. And your labor in the Lord does not go unnoticed. God sees it and there is a reward for you. And like he has said, he will honor you. It is not wasted. Okay? The sacrifice that you make, those sacrifices are not wasted. Hallelujah. Lastly, number five. I will be held accountable. Romans 14, 12. You will be held? Yep. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Yeah. I told you that day that when I realized after I was baptized and I thought about it, I'm going to live for Jesus. I thought that the best way to live for Jesus is to serve. That is why as a young boy, I did all those things I'm telling you that I did. Because I'm like, yeah, maybe, like if serving Jesus means something, then it should start at his house. So that's why I swept the church. I wanted to just live for Jesus. Yeah, so I'm like, if this is his house, this is the church, then he values it. Then let me do whatever I can. What can I do? And even giving. Guys, I gave money from when I was a teenager. I gave money for the gospel. I started giving money early. I gave for missions. I gave for equipment. I gave money. I would give from pocket money. I would save from pocket money to give. I didn't start giving yesterday. Hallelujah. Yes, I gave. Anything, I know that everything I have, I owe it to him. And that is the mentality that you should have. You will one day give an account to him. Hallelujah. And that will determine how you spend eternity. It is very important. Hallelujah. Don't hang loose. Don't be on the edge. You get what I mean? If you're on the edge, you can easily. You see, once you start serving, you, level of accountability has gone high. Yeah, because there is a leader who is going to check on you. Why are you not here on time? Why are you, you get what I mean? When you stop serving, people forget. And you may be mad at them, but that is, that is how human beings are. Even you have forgotten about some people. 
Yeah, you stop serving. People will ask you, oh, where are you this Sunday? Where are you? Then another time they forget. Then when they don't see you for so long, they forget. Then when you show up there, they are surprised. Oh, today you came. You know, like that. You don't want to be in that state. When you serve, you have, you have gone an extra level of accountability. Then even when you're out there, the devil, you, you hanging out with the devil reduces. You get what I mean? Yes. You're here, say, Shukuru Bwana. Uh uh. So, so now you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on your life. People are watching you in Botswana, people are watching you in Canada, people are watching you. Then one evening you're just passing in town and you start hearing, baby, shake it, baby, shake it. <laughs> <laughs> Then now, before you start shaking it, <laughs> you, you're like, hey, people are seeing me sing shuku. You say, okay, I will not shake it today. <laughs> you start surviving gradually, like that. Eventually, even if you hear baby shake it, baby, you, you're not hearing. Yeah, you're just going on with your conversation. <laughs> yes. You shake your head, yes. <laughs> you, you shake your head in the, you know. I'm shaking it, I'm shaking it, I'm shaking it, I'm shaking it. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. <laughs> Let's get up on our feet. <laughs> now, I want you to take one minute and I want you to commit to God. I want to commit to God on how you will, you're going to serve Him. I want to be very serious about this. Maybe you've even been serving, but like we began with the verse, first scripture, it says, unto God, not, uh, not as unto man. Maybe you've been serving him, but it has been unto man. Maybe you've been serving him for people to notice, for people to see you, for people to appreciate you. You know? But I want to make a very serious prayer right now. A very serious prayer. Tell him, God, I want to serve. You know how the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. But I want to make a prayer of commitment. Like, I'm going to serve God. I want to serve God. I want to serve God. I want to do something in your house. Okay? Yeah, I want to, I want to pray. I want to, take, I want to take a minute and pray about that. Yes, it is serious business. I don't want to just be looking around. If you're looking around, I want, I want to pray. I want to pray. This is between you and God. Yes. Yeah, even you who are thinking, but this is what must be said at church. I think this is what they should say at church. No. I want to make a commitment. Make a commitment. Father, thank you. You've had the prayer of your children. I pray that they will be held accountable to that. And that you're raising laborers, many laborers from here. People who will take the work of God more serious than they've ever taken it. Father, thank you for this, your children. I pray that as they go out this week, that they will enjoy to see the blessings that you have for them. That they will live in perfect health. No sickness, no flu shall come near them this week. That, Father, they will excel in whatever they do. You said that whatever their hand touch shall prosper. Let us hear testimonies of promotion this week. New jobs this week. Weapons that will go public. In the name of Jesus Christ. A turn around in their families. Those that are believing for great things in their families. Their parents to turn around. To change from a life of drunkenness. From a life of violence. Whatever it is. Father this week. Let us hear their testimony. Let us hear their testimony. And those who are sick or they have a sick family member right now, we cast that sickness to the root. Be it cancer, we cast you to the root. Dry up in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood diseases, HIV, be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the arthritis, be healed. Be healed right now. Arthritis, be healed. In the knees, in the fingers, be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. There is somebody with a condition of the spleen. I don't know what it is. But I command that spleen to be healed right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. May you live a life that God has prepared for you. May you live a life that you enjoy. May you live, a, may you live in houses that you love, that you like. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you prosper in whatever you do. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.